Welcome back again. In this part of the video, we're going to talk about um, the main advantage and disadvantage of experimental research, and also the main advantage and disadvantage of non-experimental research. So the main advantage of experimental research is the ability to support cause and effect conclusions. If you do an experiment, and you do it well, and you get the data that you are predicting, you can confidently reach a cause and effect conclusion. You can confidently say that your cause and effect hypothesis is supported. Now, when, when you do an experiment, you're not guaranteed to get the data that you were predicting, but if you do get the data that you were predicting, you can confidently say that your cause and effect hypothesis, whatever it is, um, is supported. So imagine you're doing an experiment to test the effect of temperature on memory, and you randomly assign your participants to, to uh, two groups, and one group goes into a hot room, and one group goes into a cold room, and you do the experiment well, and the hot group does do significantly worse than the uh, cold group. If that's what happens in your experiment, then, it, then you can confidently say that the hot temperature is what caused the lower memory of that group. You can confidently say that the hot temperature was the cause, um, and that the cause wasn't something else. So that's the main advantage of experimental research. Um, the reason why experimental research allows you to draw confident cause and effect conclusions is because um, in an experiment, a researcher can compare different situations and confidently say that there's only one difference or only one important difference between those two situations. Um, so in that temperature experiment that I just mentioned, a researcher could confidently say that the temperature of the room is the only difference or the only important difference uh, between what group one is experiencing and what group two is experiencing. Therefore, if group one did do worse than group two significantly, then the temperature appears to be the cause because there, because there doesn't appear to be any other differences um, that could explain the difference in performance. So um, yeah, that's the main advantage of experimental research. And the main disadvantage of experimental research is that um, it doesn't provide good quality evidence for how people behave in natural or real life settings. Um, most experiments are done in a lab or some other type of controlled setting. And a lab um, tends to be artificial. It's not really like the real, real world, which means that generalizations beyond the lab setting are always questionable. They're always iffy. If you're a researcher and you observe someone behaving in a certain way in a lab, um, it's difficult to confidently say that that same behavior would happen in the same way outside of the lab in a more comfortable real life setting. Um, so overall, um, experimental research is good at providing solid um, or confident cause and effect conclusions, but it tends to be artificial and it tends to not really provide clear uh, information about how people behave in real life. So um, that's uh, experimental and non-experimental research. Now let's uh, move ahead and talk about the main advantage and disadvantage of um, non-experimental research. So what we're going to do now is just take what I just said and flip it around. The main advantage of non-experimental research is that it um, does provide good quality evidence for, for how people behave in natural settings, but the main disadvantage is it doesn't lead to cause and effect conclusions. When you're doing a non-experimental study, like a survey study or, observe, or naturalistic observation, you can't pinpoint the cause of what's, you can't pinpoint the cause of your participants' behaviors because there's more than one possible explanation. If you're um, observing beha behavior on a college campus and you see people walking quickly across campus, you don't, you don't know exactly what's causing that behavior. Uh, it could be that, that they're late for class, um, or it could just be that they're um, stressed in general and the stress is causing them to, to, to walk quickly. Um, it could be that they're late, um, uh, renew it could be that they're late paying their, their parking pass and they 
don't want to get a fine. Um, it could be that they have an ex they're, they're parked in an expired meter. Um, so in, in a non-experimental study, you can't pinpoint causes of behaviors, but you can make a lot of interesting ob uh, <coughs> observations. So non-experimental research isn't useless. Um, it does provide um, a lot of good information about how people behave in natural settings. Um, and non-experimental research can reveal themes or patterns in behavior, but it just doesn't lead to confident cause and effect conclusions. So um, non-experimental and experimental um, research are really equal. Neither is better than the other. It's just each one has its own pros and cons, and each one has its own use usefulness. Um, so that's the difference between, um, exper um, sorry, we just covered the main advantage and main disadvantage of experimental and non-experimental research. And the next part of this video, we'll talk about two other categories of primary research, which are basic and applied research.